I'm really happy today. I'm really happy because uh, I don't know if you heard about Mars One. Did you hear about this? Okay. Basically, this is about settlement of uh, human on Mars. It will be in 2024, and uh, there are lots of tests for the guys who want to go there. They have been training right now, but also they made some contests in some scientist communities. And uh, I'm a lucky guy because I'm one of the scientists. And uh, in this context, I won a ticket to Mars. But somehow, at some point, I understood that this is only a one-way ticket which means I'll probably stay there and I don't know if you heard the latest news and it seems that uh, the life expectancy on Mars will be quite short it will be like 68 days or something like that so not cool and I said to myself I should try to find out as I'm an engineer how to build a space shuttle to come back to, to Earth so I checked into Polarsys technologies how I could do that so how to start? Uh, Polarsys is about several technical stuff. Uh, there are several blocks. I won't talk about it today. This is not the purpose of the talk. Uh, it, there are plenty of other talk about what is inside Polarsys. So m my goal here is to just to show you some use cases about uh, um, how we can use Polarsys in really concrete cases to, to build my space shuttle. So let's build it. Um, first, when you start engineering, you want to build a space shuttle, a plane, or whatever, you need to have some proper tooling in order to let you um, schedule all engineering activities. And at Thales, uh, they have such kind of system allowing them to build a huge system with really early validation and simulation and allowing them to schedule everything properly. This is uh, Capella, actually, and uh, the, the real strength of this tool is that all your engineering steps are driven by the process, a field-proven process. So there are lots of views, uh, but at each step of your engineering procedures, you know where you are, where you want to go, and how to perform the activities. So let's take the example of the infotainment system. This is a subsystem inside a plane and uh, probably inside my space shuttle because I don't want to get bored when I'm going back from Mars to, to Earth. <coughs> you have to know that in each plane the um, infotainment system is different because some companies would like some HD screen, some other not, for instance. And typically this is something that Capella addresses uh, with several views allowing you to uh, tune your design from the early steps of the design and allow, allowing you to show uh, what is the impact of changing one component on the other components. There are lots of views like that and uh, there are lots of viewpoint mechanisms, layers mechanisms al allowing you to hide or show what you want to see. Uh, in this case uh, there are lots of data flows which are hidden and now they are shown. So in the end this is a tool which is totally included into Eclipse so you have lots of views and I mean the user interface is quite known to lots of engineers and in the end we have a tool which is really applicable to many 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 engineering domains but still I'm building a space rocket so let's see what the key players of the space business are doing the European Space Agency for instance they uh, use Polarsys technologies to manage the hardware viability. This is a complicated schema, I won't explain everything, but let's just look at some, some part of it. Uh, for instance, for the hardware definition, they're using a designer which is based on Sirius, which allows them to define which kind of processor they want to use, uh, which kind of memory and so on. So this is really a hardware part designer. Then they have another designer from let's say a component view but a functional component view. And they have another designer for that. Built on the same technology, serious. So they define their functional components. After that 
they, um, they have some data types, they use everything that has been designed, they combine it together, and thanks to Axelio, another technology, they generate lots of code. And this code is directly deployed in the satellites. So basically, in this case, the main result is that they improved uh, really the re reusability of uh, their logic, uh, their functional component across several special missions. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going into space, so I want uh, before trying out some uh, some uh, prototypes. I want to simulate it to be sure that everything is properly designed. So let's look at what Airbus does. I don't know if you heard about the Iron Bird. The Iron, yeah, the Iron Bird is basically a, a huge room with a, a fake uh, plane, with some parts which are simulated and some parts which are actual subsystems of the plane. And using that, they do what we call co-simulation, simulation of mix of uh, concrete actual parts and simulated items. And we can take the example of a door, which is really complex. So as you see, in this kind of door, you have lots of uh, different kinds of engineering that have to be bound together and simulated properly. In this case, they have functional models, they have architecture models, and they combine it together, everything together in one single tool based again on the same technologies, which allows to bind together several kinds of simulations and to make verification, simulation, uh, generation, almost everything about uh, simulation. This is done actually in uh, the pop project inside Polarsis. And the main result is the, um, to ease the validation on heterogeneous models. Let's go deeper into simulation, for instance, on what does Artal, which is mainly about the same kind of thing, but, but with a huge amount of data. In this case, we're talking about hundreds of actors, hundreds of models, millions of signals, and this is so huge in terms of uh, simulation that to deploy this, uh, you need several running computers. So we are on the right side of the V cycle, actually, in this case. There are several modelers based on Sirius. Each modeler, modeler is um, uh, specific to any kind of engineering, of testing associated to a specific type of engineering. They also use EMF Compare and GenDoc to generate documentation. I will talk about GenDoc later on. And there are also specific designer done with Sirius 2 to allow to do the mapping uh, towards uh, the actual component which will simulate the whole stuff. And in the end code is generated using Axelio on the test bench of 15 running computers. So the idea here is that we succeed into having an integrated approach and we have a real modularity. Okay, I'm going on Mars. I'm going back from Mars. There will be lots of dangers outside there. So I also want to be sure that the safety aspect I taken care of. So let's see what Alstom does. Alstom, uh, historically, to uh, manage safety, paid lots of safety guys to look at the newspapers every day and to check for accidents. And each, uh, each time there was an accident, they were writing down some diagrams on papers to explain that accident happened for which reason. And this was really complicated because you had really two separate processes, one for system engineering, one for safety engineering, which was only uh, written on paper and in Excel files. And they were, there was no real synchronization in terms of model between both. So really hard to maintain. 
as you see, some requirements, some design, and at some point of the time, the safety engineers were giving back through the Excel sheets uh, what they found out in the, in the newspapers. So what has been done there? Uh, we just sat with the guys of Alstom asking them, OK, how do you do your drawings? What do you, know, what do you want to tell uh, when you're drawing this kind of diagram or this kind of diagram? And we made a, a design out of it uh, with their specific concepts. Here you see the hazards, uh, the potential issues, and what they call preventive barrier. And there is a model behind that. Um, you have certification level assessment here. You can design full trees. You can generate documents. And what is really interesting is that both safety model and the uh, real system engineering model are actually bound together, which means that for this preventive barrier, for instance, you can directly navigate to the actual blocks of the system model, which means the guys doing the system engineering outside of the safety can directly see, in this case, the certification level of safety here, and they can switch back to the safety views. And everything is working together perfectly. So in this case, uh, a real human expertise, which was only in the mind of a few lucky guys, has been uh, put into a real tool, a modeling tool, and it's linked to the, all the system engineering of the company. But still, I'm doing, uh, I'm building a space uh, shuttle, so this is typical, uh, specific to trains. So let's see what can be more agnostic to any kind of domain, to have something more transverse. And that's typically what does uh, all for tech um, with their tool, which is also based on Sirius, and uh, which allows to uh, uh, design safety designers, uh, which can be uh, allocated to any kind of domain. And this is really uh, done in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, in an open manner. So you see that they can generate reports, they can generate documents. And the main target, the main goal here is that you really have open innovation in a way that uh, each time a customer comes to those guys to say, OK, I want a safety designer for my domain, they discuss together the guy who wants a safety um, designer has the tool he needs, and at the same time, uh, all for tech increase their knowledge and improve the, the designers, the basis for designers. So we're really talking about open innovation here. OK, my space shuttle is peeled, but at some point, I will need to land on Earth. So maybe a balloon will help me to land properly, and a balloon with high quality, if possible. Let's take again a use case of Thales. Um, earlier I talked to you about Capella. Capella is mainly about uh, giving viewpoints to a complex system, which means by a viewpoint you may have a real complex system and a guy who has a specific knowledge will see only a slice of the model, like the safety guys, for instance. We will see only what is safety relevant. But in some cases, Capella will not uh, provide the viewpoint you need. And in this case, hello. In this case, uh, Kit Alpha allows you to extend the, the, the existing workbench. So in this case, with Cat Capella, they only added some quality assessment uh, items in order to enrich, hello in order to enrich their, their models with quality assessment uh, data. So here you can see that there are a complex model which look a little bit like the one we saw just before. And typically we see here that there are some safety related items. Again, there are some specific views which are not inside Capella, but it's fully integrated in it. Uh, and this is, those are typically views of overall uh, performance evaluation, overall cost evaluation, and so on. And it has been done using Kit Alpha to extend the existing workbench. So in, in this case, <coughs> sorry, uh, we are only talking about reusing an already existing workbench and arrangement of this workbench.
I will also want to navigate properly because I will be probably sleeping while traveling from Mars to Earth. So I will need an autopilot, for instance. And Airbus uh, is working this way. They are using a designer for software, which is called Tofu. Another designer for system part, which is called Fast. And they combine those together, they generate code, lots of code, a huge amount of code, directly in their system of autopiloting. And here, the main uh, result for them is really openness, flexibility, reuse of uh, existing components. Finally, I built everything and so on, and I want the stamp from the NASA. And as you may know, opening certification is always complicated, lots of paperwork, painful. And let's talk about GenDoc. GenDoc is a product which allows you to get, um, let's say, a document, a template of document. You annotate the document and it allows you to retrieve data from actual models and to generate huge amounts of documents automatically. In this case, uh, GenDoc was plugged to Rational Software Architect, which is not an open solution. So you see here that um, you can plug it to almost anything as soon as there is some model behind. It's plugged also to Jenkins, which allows you to continuously generate documents as soon as there is any change in the actual model. And we're talking here about huge amount of documents. For instance, here for subcomponents, more than 100 documents with 100 pages. Writing that by your bare, uh, bare hand is really painful and really long. So in this case, uh, the delivery of up-to-date document, uh, up and up-to-date is really important here, has been greatly simplified thanks to this tool. Now I can go. Cool. This is part of the show. It's good for the abs. Wait. Crap. Forgot something really important. What can I find in Mars? Martians. Great.
Hmm. It generates Java. You can generate back UML. It generates also C. You can generate back UML. It generates real time Java. And it cannot generate uh, from real time Java UML. But if anybody of you wants to contribute for this part, feel free. I mean, this is the goal. So shared investment again. Uh, now, if I want to properly build my space shuttle, I will need infrastructure. And again, we have a use case in Polarsis um, for factories. A designer uh, for parametering factories and robots in factories has been done using Sirius and IF. And to make um, the parametering of a uh, full chain of robots quite easy. And in the end, you have this kind of things where all those robots are actually parametered using this designer. So easier configuration of new wa uh, warehouses. To conclude, like um, when you're making a huge building, um, in this case, you have several kinds of people do doing several kinds of jobs. But still, um, everything has to be consistent at some point. Otherwise, the building will fall down. So. The main idea behind that is that uh, at some point, something the knowledge should be centralized, and everybody should should access the knowledge um, with a view which is corresponding to what he knows and what he wants to do. Because in this kind of engineering and in system engineering, everything is about people working together, and this is typically what we try to do with polar system technologies, having one model having several tools allowing to uh, make everything work together and uh, several tools for each ki kind of engineer with their own knowledge and their own uh, targets, let's say. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>